In this video, I'm going to take you through the first nine days of recovery from a deviated septum surgery, or better known as a septoplasty. So day one, after having deviated septum surgery, I could tell right away that I don't want to talk too loud because I feel like it's just irritating what's going on inside the nose. But uh, here's a quick rundown of how it went. Uh, the whole thing was about four hours all in, signing papers, the procedure, recovery, etc. Uh, it is full anesthesia, so I was asleep and I had somebody pick me up. And let's see, uh, there's lots of bleeding. Uh, the bleeding is still going on, so I'm changing this gauze fairly frequently. Um, at first it was a lot heavier it's fairly uncomfortable uh the pain not so bad i was given pain medication and that's helping a lot uh what's really the the most difficult part is not breathing through the nose uh, you can breathe a little bit but i'm trying not to take too many breaths through my nose there's like a little straw in the stint so there's two stints that go up into my nose that's keeping everything in place as it heals. And, and yes, you can get some air in there. So right now, the toughest part is the dry mouth from breathing in my mouth so much. But other than that, uh, day one, it's going, I guess, as good as it could. Uh, still glad that I did it so far, but we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna try to make some more updates. So I was also given an antibiotic to take uh, that's once every 12 hours so morning and night I haven't taken that yet but I will take one before I go to bed tonight day two it's still uncomfortable to talk what I've come to realize is that part of the problem is I can only breathe through my mouth so just getting enough air to really vocalize is difficult. Uh, also, you know, everything is connected, so these straws keep moving around. Uh, the dry mouth is better today. What I learned yesterday was that one of the side effects of anesthesia is dry mouth, so not only am I just breathing through my mouth, um, the anesthesia was giving me that extra dry mouth so last night was a, a rough night's sleep. Uh, for the first couple of hours, it was okay. I woke up, no dry mouth. But then after that, then it's all that I dealt with and uh, it was hard to go back to sleep afterwards. So today uh, still feels like there's just a pounding headache all the time, unless I'm on the pain meds, which I am right now, and the head feels okay, but the side effect is that I feel a little stupid and uh, yeah, just putting the video together was frustrating because camera equipment and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see, what else? There's lots of bleeding still, not as bad as yesterday, but the blood is still coming out mixed with mucus, changing the gauze about once every hour. Uh, other things that I'm doing, so the night before surgery, I had to start a fast uh, at midnight. So my last meal was at 9 p.m. And uh, here we are 44 hours later and I still haven't eaten uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I don't really have an appetite. And two, when the body is in a fasted state, it's able to divert the energy that it uses for digestion to start healing all the other parts of the body. So I figured that that would give me uh, a leg up on healing the trauma that I've gone through. And the other thing that I'm doing is taking a subcutaneous injections of BPC-157, which is a peptide. And BPC stands for Body Protective Complex. And this is essentially a wound healing agent. Uh, I may do another video about peptides at some other point, but I'm, I'm very interested in peptides and I've used quite a lot of them extensively with really good results. So I'll bring that to you in the future. But 
BPC is great for wound healing, so I've been taking that as well and hoping to speed this process along. But it's really just a day at a time. I don't know if there's a, a magic bullet to get me through this, this tough part, but uh, day two, slightly better than day one. Day three, definitely an improvement. So obviously I was able to shave today. The bleeding seems to have stopped. My voice is coming back because I'm able to get some more oxygen through my nose, uh, but there's still general discomfort in my head. So uh, yeah, the, the headache and the, the general discomfort is still there. Uh, let's see, I broke my fast last night and eating was not enjoyable because I didn't have the use of my nose. I still had the gauze underneath it. Um, but I did feel better after I ate something. And uh, let's see, last night's sleep was about the same as the first night. So for the first four hours, I just kind of passed out and then woke up with the dry mouth. Uh, I was up for, I'd say an hour or so and was able to go back to bed uh, and notice I could now get some air through my nostrils, even with the gauze there. So, so that was uh, helpful. And I, I did manage to get like seven hours of sleep all total. So I'm keeping the, the gauze off for now. Uh, I've got some tape marks here that are getting irritated. Uh, I'm gonna see how I can do without it. Like I said, there's no blood coming out now, um, but there is, I guess, some, some mucus. Uh, so you can't see them, but there's two straws in the nose and yeah, that's <laughs> leaking out mucus. Uh, the doctor said, do, you're going to want to blow your nose, but do not blow your nose. And yeah, that, that seems like a really bad idea. So as needed, I'm just dabbing with a tissue. And that's the update for day three. Day four, today's Sunday. So surgery was on Thursday. Uh, I can tell right away that my voice is a lot better. It's the first time I'm speaking today. So that's good. You'll notice that I've got the gauze back on my face. Uh, I had a really terrible night's sleep last night, and I think it's because I did not have the gauze on my face. Uh, not that I was bleeding or mucus or anything like that, but what happened was that the uh, airways and stents got really dried out, and I woke up this morning with a huge headache, uh, a lot of pain in, in my facial area. Uh, so I think the gauze helps just keep everything moist uh, and I'm just going to keep this on for now. I, I am feeling better now that I'm up and about for a couple of hours. So uh, that's the update. But yeah, I just really slept terribly last night. Um, I use an aura ring and all the indicators tell me that my heart rate was up, my uh, HRV was down, uh, body temperature was up, uh, just you name it. Everything says that it was a terrible night's sleep. So hopefully tonight will be better. I'm gonna keep this gauze on. Uh, not that I need it, but just because I think it's gonna keep it a bit more moist. So that's the update for today, day four. Day six, there was no update yesterday because I had fallen very ill. On the evening of day four, I started feeling chills and shivers and I got like feverish and sweaty and cold and all that good stuff. And what I believe happened is that I've developed either a slight infection or it was a reaction to stopping the pain medication, which I stopped on Sunday night. It's probably both. Uh, I'm sure that my body was looking for the pain meds. I stopped at about 9 p.m. And then throughout the night, it just felt horrible. Uh, yeah, it was a real battle. I haven't been that sick in a long time. So I was in bed all day yesterday, all day for day five and uh, spent the night in bed as well. And here I am, morning of day six, doing better, uh, out of the woods on, on the feverish state, which is good. Uh, I think whatever infection has started has begun to subside uh, substantially. Uh, there's no fever, I did check my fever, although my aura ring did say that I was very hot, but I had all these blankets on me, so it's hard to tell. Blankets were on, blankets were off. Um, Today I did a, a treatment of N-acetylcysteine and I did it through the nebulizer. I've got a whole video on that if you want to check that out. Uh, take a look on my channel. And 
what that did was helped free up a lot of the gunk that was sitting in my nose. So I've been dabbing my nose uh, very, uh, very gently. Um, no nose blowing is allowed, but there's been a lot of stuff coming out, uh, even some chunky stuff. I see the doctor tomorrow, uh, potentially to get the stents out. So I'll let him know what happened and, and how I'm doing. Uh, hopefully, yeah, this is the real end of all the tough parts. And that's the update for day six. Day seven, let me start with how I slept last night, which wasn't terrible. I came up with a bit of a hack. So I've got a sweatshirt that has a really big hood on it. And I put the hood on and it came down to like here. And that created some humidity from my own breath, which helped me from drying out throughout the night. Uh, I didn't sleep great, but <laughs> I didn't wake up with dry mouth nonstop. So that's an improvement. And I didn't have the gauze on last night. Uh, so there was air going through my nose that was helpful, <clears throat> but not a ton. Uh, normally I breathe only through my nose at night and I'll put a piece of tape on my mouth and I've never had dry mouth doing that. Uh, no matter how hard I try, I can't sleep with my mouth closed. I think my brain has a switch that says, you're not getting enough air through your nose, but who knows? Uh, let's see, so today I, I saw the doctor 9.20 in the morning and he took out the stents in my nose. Uh, that felt really good to get those out 100%. But I have been having this runny nose since yesterday. It's nonstop runny nose. Uh, it's not as bad at this point. Uh, it's several hours now after I had seen the doctor. I was able to take a nap, no problem. Uh, but yeah, just constant runny nose. It's like a faucet. And he said that there may be some coagulated mucus up there that's interfering with the, the function of my nose and that it should clear up and that by tomorrow I can blow my nose normally, although I have to admit I've been cheating because sometimes I just, I need to get some of the stuff out, uh, but I'm doing it carefully today. The overall impression is that I need more work done. Um, you know, when the doctor took the stents out, he was like, so how do you feel? And it, it was underwhelming. I'm like, okay, I guess, you know, like this is about how I was breathing last time. I assume most people have such a bad deviated septum that it's blocking their nostril with, with me. That wasn't the case. Uh, my assumption and the doctor's assumptions was that it was pinching the sinus and that's what the CT scan showed. So I'm going to give it a, a day or two more, but I think the next step is now to have balloon sinoplasty, uh, which is where they insert balloons into your sinuses and, and blow those up. I still have a, a pretty bad headache. I've had that all day long. I've had it all week long. Um, the headache is not as, as bad as it has been because obviously I don't have the stents in my nose, which is just more irritation to the entire area. But I think that's the prognosis. So I'm gonna give it a day and then probably schedule the appointment for balloon sinoplasty. And that's day seven. Here we are, day eight, Thursday to Thursday. And I have to report the main result is that there are no results. I feel exactly the same, if not slightly worse than what I did before the deviated septum surgery, septoplasty. So in my case, fixing the septum did not help my sinus issue, which is the main problem. I could always get breath through my nose. I just couldn't get past the sinus blockage that was up in these areas here. And the main thinking from doctors is that if you fix the septum, which is pressing up against the sinus, that that would relieve sinus pressure. In my case, that was not the result. And the balloon sinoplasty doctor actually told me that. He said that most people who don't have results from the deviated septum surgery is because they actually need the balloon sinoplasty as well. And I've scheduled that appointment. I'm gonna be having that procedure done in a couple of weeks. I'll be making some update videos about that as well. So hopefully this info has helped some of you on what you can expect during a deviated septum surgery, what the recovery looks like, and maybe helping you make a better decision about what the right path is for you to take as you're going to fix your breathing issues as well. Uh, there's still a couple more days before I can start 
exercising, they say, 10 days before you get your blood pressure and levels back up again. So there's that. But day eight, I feel like this is as good as, as it's going to get for my breathing. There's still some scar tissue healing up in there, some crusty stuff. Uh, I'd love to do a sinus rinse, but I'm afraid to actually put that much <laughs> strain on anything that's that's inside my nose right now but i'm sure that, that would make me feel a little bit better if i could just get back to my my typical sinus care routine which i can't because people were men at work inside my nose yesterday i talked about the constant runny nose last night i eventually wound up using the azelastine which helps with the excess mucus and that completely helped uh, it stopped all that runny nose uh, down to like you know a drip instead of a flow and then later on uh, the pressure built up and I had to use the other medication which is the fluticasone so I'd like to keep using those meds the doctor told me yesterday that if I do use them I should spray them away from my eye so that it doesn't interfere with any of the the action that happened last Thursday. Anyways, that's the update. Hope this was helpful. Day nine update. Last night I was able to do an Ayurvedic nasal cleanse and that was super helpful. Yeah, I just couldn't take it anymore. There was so much crusty buildup inside my nose and I needed to get it hydrated and just move some of that stuff out. Um, so last night was the best night's sleep that I've gotten in an entire week. I can tell from my aura ring that all of my scores were way better. Heart rate, HRV, deep sleep, REM, uh, body temperature, and like the readiness score that it gives you was right where it needs to be. So back to normal. Um, today, everything is still sore though. Uh, you know, the inside of the nose is still sore for sure. Um, I didn't describe this, but the stents that they, they placed in my nose were actually stitched right here on the bottom of each nostril. And I didn't know that until they took them out. And the doctor said, I have to cut this stitch out. Uh, so I think on, on both nostrils, I've got um, a, a wound from the stitch that's healing up. And that's not exactly feeling good. It's not super painful, but yeah, it's uncomfortable. If you press against it, it hurts for sure. Aside from that, uh, still headache all day long um, and I just don't know what else to do about that breathing is okay but I can still feel that my sinuses are stuffed up here so that's the update for day nine please leave a comment below and check out my other videos on sinus care the more information we can share with each other the better our quality of life can be